the producer of and till death do us part here he is jeffrey reddick hey thanks for joining us on the show jeffrey of course of course sorry i, I keep forgetting that to google put, put this on google chrome and i keep trying to get on safari um when i log on to your show so <laughs> you're all good you're all good it's good to see you good you to too. see you again yeah you how are you doing great uh first of all tell us about this movie it is I, I really just have one big question for you, which is about the stunts and the action work, because it's insane. And how your lead actress <laughs> did all of that in a in a wedding dress. Uh, but <laughs> tell us about the story for the film and, and how you got involved as producer. Yeah, uh, the story is basically without giving too much away. It's a it's a it's about a wedding gone wrong. Um, you know, it starts off as a little bit of a rom com. Um, you know, with this bride and groom get, getting ready to celebrate like the happiest day of their life. And, you know, the bride, uh, you know, notices like a, you know, a young woman and her child in the, in the audience and something's off and she decided that she can't go through the wedding. Uh, so she takes off, leaves a groom and his groomsmen behind. And then you find out that there are some people that didn't want them to get married in the first place. And now that she's taken off, she's broken some, so she's really pissed off some wrong people. So the, these grooms have been kind of track her down and ori originally we're supposed to kind of keep her contained until the groom gets there. Cause he's got to work the situation out um, to try to kind of save them <laughs> for her running off and uh, things go awry in very crazy fun ways. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a really fun movie. It's got, you know, it's got action, it's got humor um, and it's, it's got Timothy Woodard's uh, kind of, quirky sensibility you know this was a a really fun story for him and and uh you know he, it was a story he wanted to tell you know just kind of about love and relationships and you know there's there's a another plot that we we follow that really bolsters what's going on in the in the story that follows another you know couple that's been married for for decades and and they kind of meet them and uh so there's a, there's a lot of like fun relationships kind of stuff going on and then there's the action and the blood and the kills <laughs> well one of the things i didn't do before watching the film was uh see the trailer which i'm glad i didn't oh, okay, uh, but, yeah. I, but i do recommend checking out the trailer for the film uh but it this movie could almost be a companion piece to kill bill in a way it's just to warn people i mean it's hyper violent in ways and i have to ask how did you prepare for your lead actress i'm looking and i'm going like is she doing all that because i couldn't tell at times i know i'm sure there were stunt people involved but holy the acrobatics the blood prepare yeah. yourself just tell me about that that was that was all natalie <laughs> not mm -hmm. there were i think there were maybe two times when we had a stunt person in there but a, a you know, so I don't, I don't want to, you know, not acknowledge that there was a stunt person involved, but Natalie, you know, she's a trained ballerina. Um, she's also one of the producers on the film as well. And, uh, you know, it was one of those situations when I was on set watching some of those fight scenes, you know, I, you know, the producer me just kept going up to him. Are, are you sure you're okay? She's like, I'm fine. <laughs> um, so she did it in that wedding dress. It was so funny because we didn't, we didn't have a bunch of them. Um, you know, this is, a, I, I want to also mention that, you know, this was, was an indie film being put out independently. And so our whole team is, is, you know, behind the unions and this and the workers right now trying to get fair pay. So that being said, you know, as an indie film, um, they only had a couple of dresses. And so they would have to paint the dress after fights um, because there would be blood on them. So, you know, kind of the joke was like at the end of the shoot, she could, when she peeled the dress off of her, you could like just stand it up because it was so stiff from, from being painted over and over again. Um, so she was a real trooper. She was a real trooper. Everybody, everybody, um, you know, as you know, when you're working in indie film, you know, you don't have the, a lot of the luxuries you have on, on big budget films. And so everybody just kind of came in and committed you know, 110%, you know, it was a, it was a, you know, it was a very challenging shoot for everybody involved, but I, I mean that in the most positive way, how people really stepped up at the plate to, to kind of give this like a, a much bigger feel 
and um you know also just to follow tim's vision like I, we, we are marketing this as a kind of s straight up like kick-ass like blood and guts film not blood and guts but blood and action and, and murder from the beginning and it's that's definitely a part of it but there were you know there was you know the screenwriters wrote a script that was not just like a kill bill movie i mean i love kill bill but right. you know it's not as simple like i'm gonna get revenge on these guys and i'm gonna just start massacring them from the beginning so you know T tim has a has a very quirky sense of humor we had a great cast that he really let explore stuff that they wanted to explore as far as the humor goes and so i think it's i think it just all comes together in this really entertaining fun ride of a film <laughs> we've got uh we've got hundreds of people watching live let's go to some comments from our chat right here uh imperfect says i'm so sold on this film uh hey it's me and hd says wait jason patrick the solar baby himself yeah sign me up <laughs> jason so, was great yeah jason yeah obviously growing up on jason patrick and so many movies that that i loved um having him a part of this this uh film and he's got a good role he's got a he's got a meaty role it's not one of those get somebody with a name to pop up for five minutes and 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 head out the door so um yeah he he was he was yeah he was so um, it was great to work with him and then uh portland 182 says why was samurai rabbit removed from the source material love final destination um, nice way to ask a question with a compliment. Thank you, Portland. <laughs> uh, the Usagi Chronicles that we did um, had to be a spinoff of the comic book. Uh, Stan Lee was involved. And he, Stan Lee. Uh, uh, I'm just blanking on his name because I just embarrassed myself by calling him. Oh, no, it's all good. Uh, but Stan, um, the creator of the, of the uh Usagi Ujimbo uh, manga was very involved in the production and signed off on it, but they're doing an adaptation of the source material already. So we did this as kind of a spinoff with some of the characters that you know and love, but it, it had to be separate from the source material because there's actually a source material based uh, project in the works. Cool. And then uh, more questions here. Razorburn Jeffrey, was this movie just as fun as making the Final Destination films? Oh, you know, I, no, I mean, that's how dare you know, um, <laughs> I have to, I have to say that, you know, cause I wrote the, the first movie and the story for the second movie and executive produced the second one. And especially final destination, like those, those were the, those were so fun because of how long I knew it took to develop it and get it to the screen. And so once I started seeing the train rolling and, you know, we got James Wong and Glenn Morgan on board, um, had Craig Perry and Warren Side, who were some great producers working on it. And I worked at New Line in New York. So I got to see all the the casting stuff and give notes on this on all the changes that were happening. And I went to set and I actually shot a cameo. So I don't think that was my first film. Like I don't think anything's going to top that as far as, you know, because as a horror geek, like your first film getting made by a studio that, that you love. Um, there's nothing that's can kind of top that. I don't think, I think I've, I've been, cha I was chasing that dragon for many years. And then I realized, you know, the first one, the first one is, you know, it's sometimes the best. I mean, obviously in certain life situations, your first time is not the best. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I had, I did have a lot of fun on this one. It was a smaller, you know, it's a smaller cast and crew. It's more intimate. I've worked with Tim on a, on a couple of genre projects i kind of pulled him into the horror genre um so working with him is always fun and special and we will continue to work together so the experience of working with him like all the final destinations have had a different not you know we've had james wong and glenn morgan for one and three eric bress j mackie gruber two and five or two and four so um and we have a great team on the new one which will you know start once the um, AMPTP kind of gets back to the table and negotiates a fair deal for everybody. So um, it's fun to watch that one grow. Uh, but I always, I always have fun working on Tim's movies. And this one was definitely a blast because of all the stunt people. And it's the weirdest things because Jason Patrick was amazing, but you know, I'm a huge fan of Orlando Jones and I'd never met him before 
And I was like, holy shit, Orlando Jones is on. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, the last one I did with Timothy, you know, he brought Lynn Shea and Tobin Bell together. And just seeing them on screen was magic. And then the first film we did had Lynn Shea, which was the first time I'd worked with her. I've known her for a long, long time and have been a fan. But, you know, we had Tony Todd in that. And we had Michael Welch, who was in the Day of the Dead remake that I did. So that was a family reunion. So working on his films, they're always amazing in a new special kind of way because there's always meeting new people and working with some people continually. And yeah, it's a, it's like a little, it's a family working with him. I love Tony Todd. I, I met him actually on the set of the night of the living dead remake, remake directed by Tom Savini. Yes. I was a zombie in that movie. Oh, so that's awesome. That was a great I, remake. I uh, love the remake. I love what uh, Tom Savini, there's a documentary where he talks about what the original ending was supposed to be. And it was, they just didn't give him enough money to do it. And it, yeah. it kind of sucks, but uh, it was the best two weeks of camp ever. Cause I was a featured zombie. In it, oh, which that's was awesome. fun. Uh, more comments here. Brock Samson, says, Jeffrey, are you responsible for that scene in final destination two with the semi truck that will forever haunt my nightmares? I proudly, yes. Um, <laughs> I like to think that I've saved lives. That's my that's my way of not feeling guilty after all these years. But mm -hmm. um, it, it's funny because I'm from Kentucky and, um, you know, we had this story figured out for the sequel, but we didn't have the opening. And Craig and I were going back and forth on stuff. And I went home to visit my family in Kentucky and I got behind a log truck and I pulled into the next lane. And then I pulled off the highway and I called Craig up like, out of, frantically out of breath going, I think I've got, you know, what about a log truck on a freeway? And it, he's like, slow down, dude. I can't understand you. He, <laughs> he didn't say, dude, he doesn't talk like that. He was just like, slow down. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I, I, I told him about the log truck and he's like, that's our opening. And then I have to give so much credit to David Ellis who directed that um, mm -hmm. because he's no longer with us, but he was, had a stunt background. Um, and so he just knew how to make that seem way better than anything we could have imagined. Like, um, so yes, I'm very, I, I love it. The scene when the logs hit the pavement and start their mayhem. And um, it's, I think that's probably one of my top five favorite openings uh, in horror films. Same, um, same. There are, obviously, obviously there, there are other iconic ones that I dare not, you know, I, I, I would not say are better, absolutely. But they're, I would say it's in my top five for sure. And one last question before we wrap up is uh, Greasy Guido asks, this sounds like a rom-com, horror, thriller, mystery. I'm sold. Do I need to stay after the credits? Um, there are no uh, post-credit se uh, scenes. Um, yeah, no, there aren't any. <laughs> um, but yes, it is, all, it is all the things that you said in there, um, which sounds like a strange brew of a movie. But again, like I think, you know, if you've seen any of Timothy's movies, like he's got his own sensibility and style on the way that he likes to do things. So it's it's not like again, it's not like a Kill Bill straight action movie. It's got comedy. It's got romance. Um, and it's just got some wild stuff in it. It's got some wild, crazy stuff in it. Well, Jeffrey. By the way, uh, people are commenting about your mini me figure in the background. Oh, it's, right, right. It's creepy yeah, and that, amazing. That, that is mini. That's an original mini me from New Line. Um, and you, he still works. If I squeeze him, he he squeals. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's great. Well, Jeffrey, thanks for being on the show today. Really appreciate it. Congratulations. Uh, always great to talk to you. So Thank Death you. Do Us Part in theaters. Check it out. And tonight at the uh, AMC Universal City Walk, the eight forty five show, there'll be a post screening Q and A with the director and Natalie are going to be there. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, and, and, um, to, and Timothy and I will be at the Lumiere Theater tomorrow night for a Q and A as well. So, um, in Los Angeles. So, yeah, uh, I hope you all enjoy the film. And thanks for having me on the show. You, you, you've got my number, so anytime. Um, <laughs> Y'all have a great weekend. Okay. All right. Take care, Jeff. Thank you. Appreciate right. it.